you can start. Yay! Awesome! And um, hello, everyone. Hello, Mikhail. Thanks for inviting me and thanks for organi organizing this uh, remote session. I know it uh, took some uh, extra efforts from uh, organizing team side. Yeah, but super happy to uh, to present at the event. Wow, and super happy to see people. Hello, folks. Yeah, that's uh, uh, very nice. When uh, it, it, you don't always have a chance to see audience when uh, you present online, but uh, yeah, again, kudos to Mikhail and and team. Let's talk about uh, prompt engineering, um, and uh, maybe by the end of this session i'll try to fit it into like maybe 40 50 minutes uh you will answer this question is it as art or science or who knows maybe it's your next job title but uh, first thing first uh let me briefly introduce myself i'm maxim salnikov uh and uh, this is not my first appearance for uh, the events organized by uh, Mikhail. Oh, I'm always uh, sending a call for paper submissions. Uh, he's running amazing community and amazing events. Always, always join them, my recommendation. And I stream directly from um, Oslo, capital of Norway, where I'm based and uh, where I work in uh, Microsoft. Um, I have like long internal job title, but uh, in a nutshell, I help developers to succeed with um, cloud and AI technologies. I'm personally building for um, web since late 90s of the last century. All these, you know, uh, uh, HTML uh, pages, uh, be, being webmaster and like PHP, MySQL, all these uh, technologies uh, ended up but as... Uh, uh, just one yeah. request because uh, we are using the speakers of uh, my laptop and uh, it is not uh, loud enough for people who are far. Is it possible from your side to try to make it a little louder, the sound uh, from our side. I, I mean, I don't have any any slider to make my sound louder. Uh, I, I can speak louder. Oh, uh, you know what I have? Um, uh, I, I'm not big expert in this uh, restream.io, but what I noticed, uh, there is echo cancellation and noise suppression. So maybe, uh, maybe this uh oh and also auto gain control so if i uncheck everything let's give it a try i hope it bring extra noise it louder okay uh, i i checked everything now my my voice is like one uh, one to one is completely raw as i speak without any processing one two three four five is it okay is it better um is it worse Folks, tell probably me something. The same, probably it is the same. Oh, the same. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the only I can do is just speak louder. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, sorry. It will be challenging for you. I apologize for this. So, so uh, should I just continue? Yes, please. Okay, awesome. Yeah, uh, and I'm a big fan of the developer communities. I organize uh, meetups, conferences, uh, and um, yeah, I, I even have uh, one special conference that I will announce at the end of this session. And yeah, I'm always uh, presenting uh, about web development, cloud, and uh, AI technologies. Before we dive into uh, technicalities, let me... Uh, motivate you from um, from business perspective a bit and a recent report from McKinsey says that uh, generative AI uh, and of course prompt engineering is 100% uh, relevant to generative AI and vice versa so uh, this new industry will bring uh, 4.4 trillion dollars and um, the main impact will happen across customer operations, marketing, sales, software engineering, and uh, research. So I assume these uh, areas, these fields are very relevant to today's audience. And uh, like personally, it will offload us uh, employees. Um, so 60 to 70 percent of uh, our current workload uh, might be done by uh, the power of generative AI. And of course, uh, to get this power, someone has to build applications, right? And uh, inside every single application uh, that is using generative AI APIs, 
of course, um, there is prompt engineering. And so this topic is 100% relevant, uh, future proof, and it's smart investment of your time being here. Uh, very briefly about some historical milestones just to confirm that uh, generative AI era that uh, is happening now uh, is not something that happened overnight. Uh, and artificial intelligence as such is uh, with us, with humanity, since uh, like 50s of um, the previous century. And it started like trying to build expert systems that can answer um, uh, questions as, uh, as human expert. Um, like quite soon it was, uh, it became clear that algorithmic approaches are not good for organizing this kind of um, experience and uh, instead of uh, these algorithmic approaches, mathematic uh, approach, um, approach started to be used uh, when we did not uh, uh, program uh, computers explicitly, but instead of uh, feed uh, them with uh, huge amounts of information and then and, and they learn on this uh, by themselves, of course, using um, again algorithms um, we created. And um, yeah, it evolved into what we call deep learning now that is using neural networks to mimic how uh, our brains work and uh, uh, deep here means that there are multiple layers of, um, of this processing. And after all, um, around 2021, generative AI as term came and um, it's subset of um, everything what I uh, just uh, presented about, like a specific part of uh, AI intelligence, uh, artificial, sorry, sorry, artificial intelligence that is focused on generating new things. And uh, I mean, it's not actually a revolution. This is not any kind of uh, secret uh, algorithm that was invented. It's, it's a natural evolution of all these approaches, plus tremendous computational power that, that was needed for um, actually training this model. If we briefly look at the potential use case scenarios, and this is actually, uh, this slide is from another report. Uh, it's by IDC company, also very fresh, very recent. And this is kind of a journey, uh, what, uh, what's needed from company side, from business side to um, get uh, to uh, this generative AI era to solve some use cases that you see on the right hand side, like uh, automated customer service, uh, personalized or even we, we can say hyper personalized marketing campaigns. Uh, for us developers, it's code generation and testing, and I can also add that code explanation. So it's on, like all uh, what will happen, what it will take from the company uh, is on the left-hand side, and uh, in the foundation of everything is reskilling and training. And of course, uh, prompt engineering is a prominent part of, um, of um, this point. And uh, in the circle here, you see the model itself, something that we trained, that um, uh, we spent much efforts on, on, um, on gathering data, on uh, training the model, and then uh, it can make an impact. Luckily, as a, let's say, regular generic company, you don't ever need to start building this foundational model from scratch. Because currently, there are tons of different models available on the market, uh, very, very different ones. And uh, here on this slide, I just um, highlighted, uh, let's say, big names or like, or like big players on, on that market, OpenAI, Google, Meta, Microsoft. Everyone is uh, in that game. You hardly can name, um, let's say, IT giant that is not yet in uh, a generative AI uh, era. Uh, and yeah, these models are very different. Some of them are proprietary. Some of them are open source. Uh, some of them are very universal. Some of them are highly, highly specialized, like uh, for solving, uh, I don't know, very specific biomolecular tasks. So uh, in the foundation of this uh, generative AI uh, motion, uh, there is always a model. And uh, even though all these models are very, and of course, like uh, if you talk about some uh, commercialized service, uh, there is uh, also a, a gateway to this model in form of API, right? So as I mentioned, you don't, uh, in, in vast majority of scenarios, you don't have to uh, create the model yourself. You use what this company that, uh, did for you and exposed via just uh, simple API endpoints. And um, with all these um, uh, many, many options of uh, models, 
there is one common thing uh, in 100% of the cases. This is actually how we communicate with um, these models. And uh, if we look at how we ask Mid Journey to generate images for us, how we ask Microsoft Word to start with a smart um, draft proposal based on, uh, for example, meeting notes using Copilot. If we look at how we as developers communicate with GitHub Copilot in its chat mode, if we look after all in the bottom of the slide at how we communicate with um, this uh, chat GPT uh, and customer service, and this is by the way, um, real dialogue uh, on my, I, like, I spend my evenings uh, with uh, co-inventing programming language for uh, for DJ. So if you see, I'm uh, a bit into into music and uh, DJing and uh, yeah, I'm a technical person at the same time. So I try to create a language to actually describe all potential ways to mix two tracks. And I'd say this is very interesting conversation uh, I have with ChatGPT. Sometimes I agree, sometimes not, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going. Yeah, uh, back to back to this uh, topic. There is a prompt, prompt that um, uh, a beginning of our communication with large language model. And by the way, if there is a, a service that is saying that it's using generative AI, but um, there is no like um, some text field where you as a user, as a customer of this service entering prompt, that just means that uh, developers uh, created some other UI for, for you um, as a, like um, last mile of this service, but under the hood to communicate with these uh, large language models, of course, they have you, uh, they, they use prompts. Um, so what is what is prompt? What is prompt engineering? After all, uh, lots of different definitions. I found uh, the one that uh, satisfies me the most. And uh, yeah, this is process of designing. So that means starting from scratch, refining. There is always uh, iterations in the process and optimizing uh, during uh, lifetime of the prompt. You might use to continue uh, improving this uh, prompt. This I don't know. This, we can call it like text, sentences, whatever. Um, uh, prompt to guide a model, large language model that we mentioned multiple times for, for what? For producing more accurate uh, outputs like or like um, outputs we want to see as a result while keeping cost efficiency. Uh, I already mentioned that in vast majority of scenarios, you will use all this uh, functionality exposed by third party provider, provider of this uh, lar large language model. This is why, of course, for businesses, it's super important to, uh, to keep an eye on, uh, on spending. Okay, now let's have a brief look at, uh, at uh, prompt anatomy or prompt components. If we, um, Take, for example, uh, we are marketeers and or we build service for uh, marketeers and we want some marketing automation in form of uh, writing nice, like engaging, comp uh, compelling emails about new products. So what do we normally do? We send some prompt to, it could be uh, uh, chat GPT in pure form. It could be some, um, some application we built on top of OpenAI APIs, whatever. Uh, the idea is, is the same. Uh, prompt normally contains instruction. Um, um, and in this particular example, it's very explicit, like write a product launch. Uh, it, it, it's not always like that. Uh, definitely some input data or primary data is uh, desired. Also, you can set the context or you can call it secondary data about, for example, uh, sentiment of the prompt you expect. And this is, uh, in this example, it's quite uh, trivial, so friendly and exciting. We can also uh, might add the compelling uh, and, and uh, more more explanations. How uh, do we want to see the result? Then we can be very specific in uh, specifying target format. And uh, on this example, uh, we clearly see that we expect output, maybe not uh, for um, for um, uh, human to use this directly, but as an uh, like uh, as an so, as something that we pass uh, to the next uh, component of our application because this is uh, JSON. I mean, we explicitly ask model to form a JSON object for us, and we even provide example another uh, possible component of the prompt. Uh, and we are like 100% explicit here. We even uh, specify 
like where we uh, expect to see the output it's like completely unneeded in uh, in that situation but also might be useful for you to know in uh, for some uh, uh, scenarios I can say in advance, this uh, example is a bit synthetic and uh, way like exhaustive. I mean, it contains uh, repetitions, repetitions and repetitions of information. Like um, we it, it described format uh, in one way, we described format as example. Uh, in many cases, you don't need that details, but in some cases, uh, repeating information is good. And you will see this on uh, one of the next slides. So this is how we humans uh, see prompt. This is how computers uh, see, uh, see the same prompt on their side. And uh, disclaimer here, um, the session is about um, prompt engineering in general, but to pick some concrete example, I, I went for uh, one concrete type of uh, large language model that is GPT. Um, and yeah, it's safe choice because uh, maybe this is um, uh, the most well-known, the most famous type of models we have these days. Um, and um, yeah, some other models from other providers might follow some uh, slightly different scenarios. Uh, some of them don't even operate tokens. Uh, but again, uh, for um, to make this uh, session valid and uh, relevant for uh, vast majority of people in the room, let's go again for this safe choice, GPT uh, type large language model. I bet that in 90% of scenarios, you will use exactly that type. So what is what is token? Uh, <laughs> one more disclaimer, I'm not a data scientist. I'm not like, uh, I cannot uh, provide you fully precise information what's happening with the prompt on um, on the language model side but i know that uh, before doing anything else it splits this prompt into what you see on the screen tokens um, and uh, how exactly it splits it's also like up to concrete large language model um, implementation uh, so uh, uh, on this example you see that some words uh, let's say more more or less common ones can uh, take one token some words uh, for example what what you can see here like introducing it's uh, actually uh, two tokens um yeah um and uh, for example white space that is before the word is also part of um, the word uh, that goes right after it yeah uh, the, the simple rule could be following. One token is approximately four characters, if we talk about English language. Uh, why do you as a developer, as a prompt engineer, like potential prompt engineer, uh, ever care about uh, tokens, about how models understand your prompts? Well, this is very important because it directly affects pricing. I already mentioned that part of uh, Prompt engineering is uh, keeping an eye on uh, on cost efficiency, right? And um, again, maybe this is not uh, relevant for 100 of the cases, 100 of scenarios, how uh, providers of these generative AI APIs charge you for using these APIs, but at least for um, OpenAI directly and for OpenAI via Azure, it works exactly like that. You pay oh, definitely for number of API calls um, uh, you do, uh, uh, um, uh, no, no, sorry, uh, like not 100% uh, correct form formulated. No, you pay for a number of tokens you send and receive. And uh, it's a bit unusual for APIs, right? So normally I don't remember any other API where you actually pay for, um, let's say, length of uh, payload you send there, but it's the case here. And if you look uh, on uh, like uh, general uh, cost or like uh, general bill you receive after using these uh, uh, services, of course, yeah, it's uh, length and number of uh, calls you're made. So if uh, you, um, yeah, m maybe you might want to either combine calls or split calls um, in, into multiple ones, it's a question of some experimentation. And of course, yeah, also you pay for uh, the prompts you made during experimentation stage, maybe it's just a tiny, tiny fraction of um, everything. Uh, another 
uh, criteria is type of the model. So even on this uh, table, it's actually from Azure OpenAI service, you see that uh, different models charge different uh, charge differently. And uh, the strategy here is very simple. You s normally start with the most uh, advanced and those most expensive models. Uh, you get some uh, satisfactory results and uh, then you can try to downgrade to the next uh, like uh, the next like cheaper model and if the results are still satisfactory you just stay there and save some dollars a uh, few more words about uh, tokens and their efficiency i hope that i convinced you that uh, token is very um, important um, um, item to understand uh, already mentioned about white spaces and uh, so normally they are just part of a uh, word that goes right after them but uh, if for whatever reason you uh, have some uh, number of white spaces just going one after another you will pay for everyone i mean uh, every white space will take a separate token so be uh, careful with that then uh, sometimes tokens could be counterintuitive in terms of how we might understand this and how uh, model will understand this in reality uh, the date is a very good example here so you see uh, the most price efficient talk uh, like uh, way to to name some date here is on the second uh, line here it's october 12 2022 it's like a full uh, date format at the same time if we try to somehow shorten this in uh, hope to pay less we will pay more and uh, for example um second one from bottom is taking one two three four five six tokens so yeah you will just pay double price uh, for this particular part of your prompt uh, and last uh, statement here is uh, if you want to uh, pass some table or data just uh, pass it as uh, table or data I mean with um, tab separator or use pipes as separators models are quite good in understanding this I mean there is no need to uh, uh, add names to like, like co column names to every data item like and don't try to mimic json i mean uh, it will also be recognized but you will just pay more okie doc uh, these are basics of uh, prompts and the tokens let's go for uh, more general recommendations uh, they are following be very specific uh, leave as little to interpretation as possible i mean uh, you might want to restrict the model to perform specifically on your task and you will get, uh, let's say, more predictable results. Uh, order of um, prompt components is also important. Um, there is no very strict rule or strict best practice like how to form this, um, like where example should go, where the data should go, where the context should go. Only some, um, let's say, experience-based recommendations. Uh, I'll uh, have them on the next slide, but just, just uh, make sure that uh, when you change this, um, components uh, change their order in the prompt you might get different results and uh, then you just pick what works best for you and for uh, specific scenarios uh, uh, yeah also uh, as I mentioned uh, before in in our example sometimes uh, repeating parts of the prompt also will improve output yeah uh, definitely you have to find proper balance here right because uh, if you repeat some information in the prompt again uh, you will spend more tokens and uh, if we talk about I don't know uh, thousands or uh, millions of the prompts you send to this API it might heavily affect uh, how much you pay for uh, for this yeah again it's a question of finding proper balance uh, and for scenarios when you, for example, ask model not to like generate something for you, generate something new, but uh, uh, to, for example, categorize or classify some items, put um, some some points, some items into some categories you provided. It's also, by the way, very uh, well-known task for generative AI. And even though it's not about uh, creativity and not about uh, generation directly, still like. Uh, we let's say we can uh, say that okay it it generates proper um, like uh, categorization right so in that cases instead of uh, uh, asking model to uh, put particular item into one of uh, let's say buckets you also provided and uh, you'll see this on practical example you might want to say uh, if 
you unsure which uh, category to choose, just uh, say like, I don't know. And again, uh, in some edge cases, uh, you'll get better results. I mean, yeah, definitely some manual processing will be needed, but um, like, let's say less likely there'll be wrong item in wrong category. So, uh, and yeah, it's also about uh, being very explicit in the prompt in our communication with the model. So based on these very general recommendations, some more concrete uh, advices, more concrete recommendations. Um, and if we, it's actually about uh, order of uh, order and uh, and repetition. Uh, the general uh, recommendation is following: start with instructions, with very clear instructions, and also you might uh, want to repeat uh, same instruction and the, at the end of your prompt. Again, uh, this is always uh, it, it, iterative process. Uh, I guarantee you, I give you one hundred percent. Your first prompt uh, will be not ideal one. So yeah, experiment and. And uh, play with this, and uh, you will you will you will nail it. Uh, also, uh, you might want to help a large language model to recognize components of your prompt, uh, and uh, don't be shy. Use uh, different separators. It could be I don't know um, uh, some uh, dashes in a line, uh, or uh, also a very often separator like how how to separate examples, how to separate different components of your prompt. Um, number of uh, hashtags going one after another, like uh, three hashtags is more than enough. Uh, provide headers to your sessions. Yeah, be, yeah, uh, spend some time on on this, on uh, making sure that it, the instructions is very clear. Um, in some cases, you might want to split task to subtasks. It can be even within one prompt or maybe even more efficient to uh, split it into uh, multiple prompts and then you can chain them and I have a slide on that. Also, if we talk specifically about um, APIs exposed by OpenAI and Azure OpenAI, you can, um, in addition to the prompt itself, uh, provide a couple of um, parameters where you can adjust, let's say, level of the creativity. And uh, if uh, this is, for example, marketing automation about generating new slogans, generating new product descriptions, everything, maybe you can, uh, you might want to uh, turn on creativity uh, to full scale or vice versa. If it's about classification, categorization, some formal, more like or more formal things, you might want to reduce this, uh, let's say, creativity to make uh, model behave more in, in more predictable manner. Okay, these were, let's say, general recommendations and uh, now some more concrete examples and uh, some techniques. Uh, let's imagine that we build a solution for insurance company and this is to uh, behave like a first line of the support uh, just to classify some uh, initial requests from our customers into uh, like uh, big buckets uh, auto insurance uh, home uh, flood info insurance and also you see we use one of the techniques I mentioned we give model uh, an out uh, then we uh, like say that, that this question is not relevant to insurance when uh, in, in, instead of still trying to somehow fit this request into two uh, previous buckets. Um, yeah absolutely valid scenario and used in uh, many 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 real life products. Uh, what do we see on the shorter version of the prompt? Um, yeah, basically following some good practices. Okay, that's uh, that, that, that's nice, um, but no examples provided. It's still absolutely valid scenario. This will work, um, and uh, since there is zero examples, we just call this uh, technique zero shot. Vice versa, if we supply the prompt with a few examples, it will definitely make it a bit longer, right? So we will pay some, um, I don't know, um, cents for uh, uh, thousands of our requests, um, uh, like a bit more, right? M maybe not uh, business critical at all. At the same time, the results will be more predictable. So this could be critical. This is why uh, we decided to provide a couple of um, examples just to help model to understand what do we mean exactly. And um, yeah, this technique is called few shot. 
uh, yeah, general recommendation is um, just supply some examples. Another technique is uh, to also uh, simplify model life and uh, to uh, give it a chance to think a bit more. Uh, slightly synthetic example, definitely you don't want to normally use uh, generative AI and large language model uh, in particular to math issues, uh, right? Some, uh, some math exercises. But still, uh, it illustrates the idea very good and illustrates another concept uh, that is large language model is trying to find the lowest hanging fruit answer on uh, pretty much any question. This is why when we supply this um, simple, simple um, like uh, exercise, the initial answer or like S is answer, we can call it like this, will be incorrect. Um, I cannot uh, like tell you like exact uh, calculation way how we ended up in with this uh, 8 uh, million liters per year, which is incorrect answer. Uh, but I can tell you uh, how we can ask model to calculate it correctly and see correct path. And this is just, uh, it, it works like a magic, but if we provide one simple extra statement there, one simple extra sentence, let's think step by step and explain calculation step by step. Again, um, it's not exactly these words, right? You can uh, try to, to simplify this instruction, but, but you understood the idea, right? Uh, we explicitly ask model to think step by step. You will see different out output yeah with some um, steps provided and after all what's uh, way more important is correct result so yeah this um, technique called reasoning or another name is chain of thought um, another variation of uh, this technique is when we do not provide uh, this uh, sentence hey uh, models uh, model think step by step instead of we provide example and uh, as you see here uh, uh, in uh, dotted frame yeah we kind of uh, ex explained ourselves this is what uh, what we added answer uh, explained model that uh, we expect this format of output and uh, this is not just you know the final answer but some uh, some steps and again uh, it made a result from incorrect to correct. Before next variation of the same uh, idea of reasoning or, or chain of thoughts, I can uh, just, uh, I want to briefly say that prompt chaining is absolutely a good idea and uh, maybe in uh, some solutions that are more complex than hello world you will use this one and it's not like a technique of prompt engineering itself it's more technique of uh, how you um, architect your um, backend layer but um, yeah just keep in mind that that's totally valid scenario when you use output of uh, one prompt as a part of uh, the next prompt. So you chain the calls to these APIs. Of course, in that case, uh, it, it all has to be synchronous, right? So latency uh, becomes important there. I mean, you cannot run these three chains in parallel because uh, uh, every next chain is dependent on uh, output from the previous one. So if we use prompt chaining technique, we can um, come up with another um, idea for uh, reasoning is uh, when in, let's say, first prompt we we do it in a simple way and uh, ask model to explain step by step very explicitly and uh, we use output, we use um, uh, output as an example for the next similar prompt. Um, again, um, it's definitely a very uh, imaginary uh, scenario, but um, yeah, this is something that automates our work, like instead of um, creating these examples uh, ourselves, right? And of course, uh, yeah, it's very simplified, right? The, there might be multiple examples and uh, for some complex scenarios when model still cannot understand properly what you uh, want to get from it. Yeah, you might want to provide multiple examples and you don't need to actually create these examples manually. Thanks to chain of thought or reasoning uh, plus prompt chaining. Also, you will need prompt chaining when you hit uh, prompt uh, length limit. And uh, yeah, I, by the way, I forgot to say then in case of uh, using these third-party providers like OpenAI or Azure OpenAI, 
there is always a limitation on the number of tokens you can send um, in uh, one API call. I mean, um, it, it's not uh, like a price uh, is not the only limitation. I mean, you cannot send, uh, um, I don't know, uh, 1 million uh, tokens because current models, if I remember correctly, like uh, currently like uh, commercially available uh, APIs can accept up to 32K tokens, which is still quite a number, right? If we talk about uh, the text, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely not about a uh, few sentences, right? You can, uh, you can be, uh, I, I'm, yeah, I, I mean, you, you can send the good amount of text, but, but not uh, infinite at the same time. So what if uh, your task is to summarize a large uh, document uh, and like really large document, like whole book, let's say, uh, definitely uh, it will uh, go over limit of uh, prompts you can say uh, you can send to API. What can you do? You can split this uh, document book, whatever, into some chapters, pages, you, you name it, and just to make sure that uh, every um, chapter is uh, within a uh, token limit for this particular API. You s and, and um, you ask summaries for um, these particular uh, parts of your larger document. And by the way, this is this is where you can actually send parallel requests, right? And after all these requests fulfilled or like, completed successfully, uh, you ask same model, same API endpoint to send you summary of the summaries. And this is uh, the way you can uh, process large amounts of information. And um, yeah, this is why it's called prompt chunking because yeah, you, you need to apply some logic. And um, of course, that's really good to have smart logic on uh, creating these chunks or splitting the documents. Yeah, so these were some basic techniques of uh, prompt engineering, of improving your prompts. And uh, using all these, um, not, not all of but like uh, at least some of these techniques, you can uh, create some really smart uh, solutions. Like for example, another very often very popular scenario for using generative AI is to is, is building um, different flavors of uh, knowledge bots. It could be uh, some internal bots uh, for a particular company employees to simpler navigate uh, through like internal documentation or uh, um, all these endless um, uh, contracts uh, with um, different services uh, providers available for for employees. So if let's say if your company has some knowledge base um, or uh, for employees, that's a lowest hanging fruit scenario. As well as it could be exposed externally if um, you build some service for your customers uh, where they also can uh, ask questions on um, services you provide and you have some uh, documents in, uh, I don't know, PDF, uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Markdown, whatever format, and you want this bot to be very smart. My strong recommendation is to build process called retrieval augmented generation. Um, yeah, we don't have time, unfortunately, to go through this uh, flow in details. I can only say that it's um, about prompt chaining. It's uh, about uh, enhancing like, or enriching context of um, your prompt by the data you gather it from your internal knowledge system. And uh, the way you organize query to your uh, knowledge system based on some, uh, let's say, completely raw, unprepared uh, message you receive for, uh, on the chatbot, either from employees or your customers, is also something that's uh, taken care of by generative AI. So I strongly recommend you to learn uh, this pattern, uh, reg, and if you plan to build something using generative AI or plan to move your career that direction, this is point number one for you to uh, explore. On the practical side, I recommend you to go and explore what I created based on uh, this, uh, this uh, concept, like not, not created from scratch, of course, uh, used some uh, 
foundational repo from my colleagues in uh, Microsoft and uh, rewrote everything uh, to uh, uh, JavaScript. I'm a JavaScript guy and um, like initially backend was written in Python, now it's in Node.js. And oh, yeah, I simplified lots of things in uh, favor to simplicity. So this project is open source. You just go to uh, GitHub, you can easily fork this, you can easily spin this up on your machine and uh, check the code. You will uh, understand how all this uh, retrieval augmented generation process works. If we talk about um, ready to go commercial services, we have the one for you on uh, Azure. So um, Azure OpenAI part is uh, improving very fast. And, uh, and uh, one of the latest additions is uh, actually exactly what I just introduced, let's say building all flavors of uh, enterprise chatbots that operate only with uh, the internal data without uh, inventing something and taking something from internet. This process now is uh, fully streamlined. If uh, you open Azure OpenAI Studio, this is the question of uh, uploading some files, specifying some uh, Azure workloads where you uh, want to store these files and you'll get uh, ready for deployment code that you can uh, either just uh, spin up again on Azure using App Service or uh, download this and uh, fine tune it. A uh, couple of uh, tools, or actually three tools, I want to mention at the end of my session. And uh, these tools, um, definitely you will um, uh, hear their names in your prompt engineer career if you um, were inspired to move that direction after my session. Um, it's called LangChain, um, let's say, and, and Semantic Kernel. Basically, they are similar. Uh, they, they, um, have uh, slightly different concepts under the hood and if semantic kernel is uh, based on um, the plugins then in length chain it's more or less um, more the, the less same uh, more or less the same concept called uh, agents it's about actually let's say chaining uh, your, your flows and uh, adding some connectors to external sources, uh, both to gather information from um, some uh, source to enrich your prompt or store results of your previous prompts uh, for later usage. This is uh, why uh, Semantic Kernel, for example, has a concept of, um, of memory. So like really like automation or maybe we can say industrializing your work with uh, prompts and uh, more general, uh, generative AI focused um, applications. And both tools are open source. And one more open source tools, it's uh, the latest addition to a family of um, all these amazing tools called PromptFlow, also by my colleagues in Microsoft. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I'd say it's uh, prompt driven developers, uh, no, no, not developers, but development, sorry. Uh, uh, let's say uh, we, we know uh, TDD, DDD, and now we have uh, PDD, right? Prompt driven development. This is where uh, you architect some component of your backend that is uh, about uh, communication with um, generative AI APIs. So you, you, you start architecting by building the flow of the prompt exactly like the name of this tool says and then like leaves on this uh, tree you add the different pieces of code um, works like magic also open source uh, also has um, uh, hosted version on azure please go and explore and start using this yeah um, learning resources i picked only few links to present five of, of them uh, and um, all these resources battle tested i went through everything personally and this set of information will keep you busy for maybe a couple of weeks if you decide to learn uh, more about prompt engineering and decide to become prompt engineers and by the way i i will send Mikhail this uh, pdf and i hope that there is a chance uh, to share this with all of you. So, I mean, you will get all these links. Um, if um, if, um, oh, if you want to get it immediately, I have um, something for you on the last slide. And this is slide before last slide, um, shameless promotion. I'm a big fan of prompt engineering myself. Uh, so I decided to organize world's first conference dedicated to this topic. And it's online, it's free. It will happen in uh, three weeks, October 12th. Uh, please register your free ticket. I uh, work on the program now, the program as name of the uh, 
uh, conference domain says rocks. I guarantee you will be uh, very surprised by amazing sessions our speakers submitted. And finally, my last slide. Folks, um, yeah, this is a secret ingredient uh, to start your prompt engineering career immediately. Find me on LinkedIn, just uh, either search for Maxim Salnikov or scan this QR code. Yeah, I see some, some people uh, uh, take out mobile devices. Um, please, please, please do this now. And um, yeah, ask me, ask me anything. Uh, ask me about these resources before uh, ever Mikhail uh, shared this file with uh, everyone. Ask me advice on prompt engineering, on open AI, on generative AI, on everything. I'm super open for your questions. Yeah, that's it from my side. If uh, I see you have, I see we have uh, five minutes left before uh, the break. If you have any questions, I'm yours. I have some questions. I will ask just people to come closer rather than uh, ask the questions. No, I didn't have a question. I just uh, said that uh, the links are covered by so. Yeah, Max. Yes. Uh, the question is because uh, when we are streaming, we are adding some labels, and part of, uh, actually written information on the bottom of your slides coming from I industry, me, track, me, something like this. Uh, uh -huh. It would be really great if you are able after the, to send the slide back. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you will, you will get this PDF um, uh, in a few minutes. Or like, if you need it like immediately, or some uh, link immediately. Again, ping me on LinkedIn, and I'll try to answer uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Okay, doc, folks. Then have a great uh, rest of the conference. Uh, have a great uh, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, all next week. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you for the nice session and uh, have a nice rest of the day. Yay! Well done.